Ceredwin was a woman of great power. Some thought she was a goddess, others a fairy. Others would mutter and say she was one of those women that lived on the edges of the community, not to be trusted, but with knowledge. One thing was for sure, she had power. She had spent many days in the forest learning of the medicine that it could give you. She understood the earth. She understood the air. She understood water. And she understood fire. Kedwin also had two children. Kiwi was beautiful. She, she had everything you could possibly want for a daughter. Intelligence, wisdom, beauty. Her son, Morfran, on the other hand, he was not so lucky. Kelodwin believed that he was ugly. She believed him to be stupid and of little intellect. Morfran was happy. Kelodwin was not. And so Kelodwin, with the knowledge that she had, knew that she could give her son all the advantages that her daughter Kiwi had, but that it would involve using a very dark and powerful magic that lay in the very heart of the elements which she knew how to combine. However, this potion, if you will, required a very special set of circumstances. It needed the very, very particular type of ingredients, which obviously Kerridred knew of, but it also needed to be stirred. Stirred for a year and a day. Now Kerridred could not collect all of the things that she needed and stir the pot. And so it was that she went down to the next village and she uh, took into her employ a young and biddable boy named Guion. A Guion was, as I say, young and naive, but when he learnt of his task and that all he would have to do for one silver coin is stir this pot for a year and a day, and believe me, a silver coin was more money than he could possibly earn in a year, well, he was very happy to do it. So Guion took up his position by this enormous pot, cauldron, if you like. And he began his task. But not before Kerudin gave him a warning, and the warning was that once this potion was complete, it would only be the first three drops that would be of any good. Only those first three drops would hold all of the intelligence, wisdom and beauty that she required for Morfran. And should Guion happen to think about it, he was not to take those three drops. And as I say, Guion began his task and he was very, very happy in his task. He was fed and watered well, and Kevin was kind to him. Each day she would go to the four corners of the earth to find the ingredients that she needed. First, she went to the earth itself for the healing herbs, the sage, the marjoram, the thyme. She placed all of the different herbs that she could find into the pot. She went to the hedgerows for the blackberries and the rose hips. And then she went down to the water's edge. She went to the rivers for the tiny minnows and the crayfish. And then she went to the seashores for the periwinkles and the slimy gutweed. She brought them back and she put them into the cauldron. And then she went to the air. She found feathers from the great birds, the hawks, the owls, the falcons. And then she went to the birds, which perhaps you and I may not think are so great, but they do offer wisdom. The gently cooing pigeon, the churring long-tailed tit, and the great tit with its many songs. 
She put all of these feathers into the cauldron and Guyon continued to stir. Of course, she did not go for fire because fire was beneath the cauldron. She did, however, have one other ingredient. Only Keridan knew what this was, so I am afraid, listener, I do not know what it was, but it required Keridan to travel many, many miles. It was almost a year and a day. On that last day, she was heading back with that last bit of the spell. That bit that she felt was so vital in getting this spell right for Morfran. Guion could feel in every bone that his task was almost complete. He was so excited, so excited. He was stirring that cauldron. He knew if he did a good job, he would get that silver coin. And as he was stirring and thinking about what he would spend that money on, three drops splashed out of the cauldron and down onto his thumb. Guion, not fully concentrating on his task, stuck his thumb in his mouth. As the magic rushed through his veins and right down into his feet and his toes, he realised what he had done. He could feel all of that intelligence and wisdom and beauty that was meant for Keridwin's Morfran. She, he could feel it going through every single sinew and he knew that Keridwin would also feel it too. She did. And Guion could see in the distance that there was now great grey clouds raising up above the forest. A thunderstorm was coming his way and he could hear the thundering feet of Keridwin as she ran towards him. Somehow, something within him knew that he must change. He shapeshifted into a hare and began to run across the fields. Keridwin, she knew what had happened. She knew that Guion had taken that potion and she was not going to let him go. And so she changed herself into a greyhound and she followed him chasing, snapping at his heels. Soon she was almost upon him, his teeth almost, her teeth almost on his feet. Guion thought quickly. He changed himself into a salmon and threw himself into the river, pushing hard against the strong currents. His lithe, muscular body pushed forward through the stream. Keridwin was not going to let him go. She reached the banks of that river, turned herself into a sleek otter and went down into the water and chased him with ease. Again, her teeth almost upon his tail when Guion leapt up out of the water and up into the sky and turned himself into a tiny wren. Well, this was no match for Kerid when she turned herself into a hawk and followed him fast for every wing beat that she made. There were five of Guion's. He was never going to escape. And he knew this. So when he saw a field of wheat, he turned himself into a grain and dropped to the ground. Keridwin, I told you she was powerful. She was never without a plan. She landed and turned herself into a plump, glossy black hen, and she began to eat every single grain of wheat in that field till her belly was round and full and her feathers were ruffled from where they were taut on her skin. She knew her job was done and she turned herself back into the woman that she was. Done. Guion would no longer bother her. She had sought her revenge. She could not make another potion, but perhaps next year. Perhaps next year. The time rolled on, the days, the weeks, the months, and, well, Keridan's clothes began to get tight, her belly rounder, and she realised she was pregnant. Not only that, but that within her was Guion reborn, that seed of wheat. 
She was still so angry at what had happened that this boy had robbed her boy of the magic that she had intended for him. And so she decided that when Guyon was born, after she'd given birth to him, she would have done with him. She would finish him, finally. Well, of course, listener, you must know that maternal instinct is a strong thing. And when Guillaume was born, she looked down on this child that had rays of sunshine within its hair, stars in its eyes and the complexion of the moon. It had all of the intelligence and wisdom and beauty that she had hoped for more Fran. And she could not kill him. And so she wove a basket out of willow and she placed the baby Guillaume within it. And she pushed him out onto the river she would let the river decide on Guion's fate. And the river did decide. The river took Guion up, along, past a large farmhouse, where a woman and a man who dearly wanted children, but had not been blessed with them, lived. They looked down at the boy in the basket, and they thanked the gods and goddesses for their gift. They lifted him out and there Guion lived with them happily. But they did not name that boy Guion, no. They named that boy Teliesam, the first bard. There are many, many stories of Teliesam, but those, my friend, are for another day. I'm Dawn, an author and professional storyteller. Back at the beginning of lockdown, if you can remember that far back, it seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Back in 2020, I created a Patreon called Rewild Yourself Through Story. I've loved creating that Patreon and the support that I have received there has been invaluable. Now we are living post pandemic, shall we say, and things have changed a little. Uh, certainly my workload has changed. And so it's come a time when I need to combine some of the things that I do, namely my newsletter, my membership service and the podcast. Now, as many of you know, the podcast is currently on hiatus. Um, however, I do intend to return with that podcast. I'm really hoping that I can do it in the new year. We'll just have to see uh, what, uh, what stories this year brings. So I want to combine the newsletter, my membership service and my uh, podcast. The way to do that is Substack. If you haven't heard of Substack before, it's another great way of supporting creatives. It offers a free membership and a paid membership. It's very simple. There's just two tiers, free, paid. For the free membership, I will be offering my newsletter, book reviews and uh, my podcast because my podcast has always been free in one form or another and I will continue to leave it that way. As a paid member, you can pay £5 a month, which I am told is less than a London pint. So there you go. £5 a month. And I will put uh, extra uh, posts on there in the form of essays and um, behind the scenes, questions and answers. I will also be doing my uh, Rewild Yourself Through Story um, offer which was things like the mindful uh, moments for well-being uh, and seasonal story connection. So those things will be across there again as well. So I really hope that you will join me on Substack. I've called my Substack Keridwin's Cauldron. Keridwin's Cauldron is one of my most favourite stories to tell. It often is told around the fire um, at one of my favourite venues, Butzer Ancient Farm. So I often tell that story it's in roundhouses around the fire. So it has a special place in my heart. It's stitched into my bones. And uh, to celebrate the launch of Keridwin's Cauldron on Substack, I have created a new video of Keridwin's Cauldron. And that is available to everybody. 
I do hope you will go and take a look at the video and that you will enjoy it. And one other thing, do use the link underneath this video in order to join me on Substack. See you soon. Toodle pip. Thank you.